الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وصلوات الله وسلامه على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا سهلا إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك يا رب الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. This presentation is called the Levantine Prophecy, reviving the legacy of the land of the messengers. And our story today um, starts with a phenomenal character, um, one who truly changed the world. And that's a cliche which is used far too often in our daily nomenclature, but it's really applicable to the person that we're going to kick off with. And he was a follower of the da'wah of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, who is a giant in his own right. He who was tested by his Lord, who had to endure with such great patience, and he set effectively the standard of patience for the da'wah of the prophets. So anyone who is a follower of him has huge footsteps to follow in. But clearly, clearly, when it's been set so clearly and so beautifully by Sayyidina Nuh, this is what we expect from him. Faithful servant and a great example and our follower of Sayyidina Nuh salam, he's just a young boy when we pick up his story, born in South Iraq at a time where shirk it was more than some abstract theory that we understand it today, something which is studied in our books today, in our classes today, shirk was real, it was an insanity what people were doing and he is born into a family where his father, if you like, actually was one of the, the main chiefs in paganism. In fact, you could say he's the head of the shirk department, if you would put it that way. And so therefore, clearly, a very challenging time to a young child who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whilst he was young, had given something special. This child was a prodigy. He had something more. He, his heart is described as being sound, clean, quality, and pure. And he was looking around at the actions of the people and what they were doing, and he was shocked as a small child and seeing what the people are doing with things that they're making out of their own hands, just made out of stone, made out of wood, and then treating them in this manner, which they are actually devoting their time to going and visiting, putting in drinks and food. And he saw one of them in a famous incident, and uh, he went up to it, and it, it was like an idol that had big ears. And he said to... He said to his father, why are these ears so big? And so he said that, well, this is the big God, the chief of all the gods, this one, Marduk. This is, his ears represent his knowledge. It represents his, his uh, dominance over the rest. And so Ibrahim, who is, of course, our character, alayhi salatu was salam, he jumped onto this Marduk and tried to, to ride it, holding his ears. Because that was the way that he could only see that these are things to play with. You're worshipping them? Are you serious? In fact, he said to his father, are you kidding me? This is what you guys are doing? Are you seriously going to worship and devote your time and respect? You choose false things and take them as gods other than, one, other than the one true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If this is what you think of all this nonsense, what are you going to think then of the Lord of all of the worlds. But he didn't get the response which he wanted because he was a young man he's not listened to. And so as his age and his years go on, he's now developing a plan. He's seeing that the people are not taking him seriously. So one day when he's gathered with the mushrikeen of the time, and they said to him, 
why don't you come with us to one of our events? He said to him, you know what, I'm feeling a bit sick, which is a little bit, you know, playing with the truth because although he wasn't medically sick, I'm sure you can understand anyone who is worshipping this kind of nonsense is going to be feeling a little bit sick inside in the head and in the mind. And so stage one was done. The town was evacuated. They all went to their event and they left behind these statues. And so he approaches these statues and he looks at them and he says, well, why are you not eating? Why are you not breathing? What's happening? Why can't you speak? Poking, pushing and then with one blow, he smashes them to pieces. He has now truly upped the ante. Now, when the people returned, they confronted him and they said, what on earth have you done? What are you doing? How dare you? But Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, despite his age, said to them, how can you guys seriously worship that which you create with your own hands when it's Allah who created you and everything that you do, are you serious? But that didn't work with them. That didn't resonate with them. They tried to play another game. They said, how dare you try and be smart with us? And so they grabbed him and they gathered against him and they tried to burn him to try and humiliate him. But do you think it was Ibrahim who would be humiliated or them humiliated in the end? وَإِنَّ مِنْ شِيَعَتِهِ لَإِبْرَاهِيمِ إِذْ جَاءَ رَبَّهُ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ إِذْ قَالَ لِأَبِيهِ وَقَوْمِهِ مَاذَا تَعْبُدُونَ أَإِفْكًا آلِهَةً دُونَ اللَّهِ تُرِيدُونَ فَمَا ظَنُّكُمْ بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ فَنَظَرَ نَظْرَةً فِي النُّجُومِ فَقَالَ إِنِّي سَقِيمٌ فَتَوَلَّوْا عَنْهُ مُدْبِرِينَ فَرَاغَ إِلَى آلِهَتِهِمْ فَقَالَ أَلَا تَأْكُلُونَ مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَنْطِقُونَ فراغ عليهم ضربا باليمين فأقبلوا إليه يزفون قال أتعبدون ما تنحتون والله خلقكم وما تعملون قالوا بنوا له بنيانا فألقوه في الجحيم فأرادوا به كيدا of course, of course, Asfaleen, we humiliated them and of course they would be humiliated. What were they doing? What was Ibrahim السلام, asking them to do that was so wrong, that was so evil? No, what they were doing was so wrong. What they were doing was so evil. Shame upon you, he said, shame upon you. What are you doing? Are you reflecting upon your actions? But they were having none of it. And so they literally grabbed him and they catapulted him into the fire. I want you to imagine this kind of punishment being put upon a person. And at that time, Sayyidina Jibreel السلام, came to him. Shall I help you? I don't need help from you. Ibrahim السلام, said, if I'm to be helped, Allah will help me because I'm standing upon the truth. What's death? What's death for a person who knows that he is upon the truth? Death is just me reaching that truth. That's why the one who dies in this manner is called a shaheed. The one who witnesses, truly witnesses, ashhadu, Allah ilaha illallah. The one who has truly witnessed tawheed and purity. So do you think Ibrahim alayhi salam was, was, was afraid of death? Do you think these obstacles are a problem for the people who are upon the truth? They see trial and tribulation as little tests of purification. Little tests which prove their iman. But they still tried and they failed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. He did not let him down. Fire, stop, be cool, be safe. Be safe upon Ibrahim. You will not harm Ibrahim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was right. The fire did nothing to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And he was then rescued and evacuated from that land of shirk to the blessed land. The land 
of the Levant, the land of Sham. قال أفتعبدون من دون الله ما لا ينفعكم شيئا ولا يضركم وفي لكم ولما تعبدون من دون الله أفلا تعقلون قالوا حرقوه وانصروا آلهتكم إن كنتم فاعلين قلنا يا نار كوني بردا وسلاما على إبراهيم وأرادوا به كيدا فجعلناهم الأخسرين ونجيناه ولوطا إلى الأرض التي باركنا فيها للعالمين A land that we blessed for all the people a land that will be blessed and only allow the people of victory to manifest themselves, led by the greatest of victors in our history, the prophets, alayhi salatu wasalam. A land which has seen countless of these giants suffer and sacrifice and win each time because victory only comes with suffering and sacrifice and patience. And this land even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen it to be blessed and special, but it's the actions of the people that make a place special. When we talk about Al-Ard al-Lati barakna fiha lil-alameen, that land that we blessed for all of the alameen, it is because of these giants. It's because of these people who come and they sacrifice this Levant, this Sham, this mighty stretch of land from the Euphrates in the west, to Sinai in the east, bordering Hijaz. This is a land of Asham. Rabbana inni askantu min dhurriyyati biwadin ghayri dhi zar'in inda baytika al-muharram Rabbana Rabbana liyuqimu al-salah faj'al af'idatan Sayyidina Ibrahim, when he arrived in Sham, he was facing a situation. He's a man, he wants to get married, and he comes upon the most beautiful woman, Sarah. And after marriage, we see a very happy relationship develop. Unfortunately, she is sterile. She is not able to have children, which is the big wish of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. At that same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down a trial, a trial in the form of a king, a king who tries to take Sarah from Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Via one way or the other, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the system on its head so much so that the king not only allowed Ibrahim alayhi salam and Sarah to get away, but also gave them a gift as well, Hajar. And this lady, she became the second wife of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Sarah still wanting children and realizing that it's going to be difficult for her to try and maintain the happiness of Sayyidina Ibrahim, blessed this marriage. And Ibrahim alayhi salam then was commanded to go by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take camp and set up with the second wife in a blessed land, the second blessed land, Mecca. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with Ismail alayhi salam. After this had happened and Sayyidina Ibrahim had fulfilled the command, it was a truly difficult one, an uncultivated valley, no one around. No one would be able to see that this is blessed other than if Allah had given the wahi, the revelation. After Ibrahim had proven himself by leaving his young baby child and his beloved wife with a little bit of dates and a little bit of water to fend for themselves, he trusted in Allah, they trusted in Allah. He then returns. He comes back to Sham and there he stays in a lot of stability and then in a blessed event. Sarah, who's fertile, is visited by the angels, led by Jibreel alayhi salam. And they are blessed with the gift 
the gift of Ishaq. Ishaq alayhi salam is the, the head of Bani Israel because through him then comes our uh, Nabi Sayyidina Ya'qub alayhi salam. And then through Sayyidina Ya'qub, you all know who Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam and his beautiful story is gathered in the Quran in a number of places. At this same time, at this same time, there is one follower of the da'wah of Sayyidina Ibrahim, Lord alayhi salam, a nephew who was following him in the haq and the patience. And these are people, are people who have to see such pain. And what Lord alayhi salam saw from his own people, the pollution and the filth, actions which do not befit, and I don't want to insult animals, but they don't befit animals. For this to happen in the blessed land is unacceptable. Unacceptable for the land, unacceptable for the prophets, unacceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ وَلُوطًا إِلَى الْأَرْضِ الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا لِلْعَالَمِينَ وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ نَافِلَةً وَكُلًّا جَعَلْنَا صَالِحِينَ وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ وأوحينا إليهم فعل الخيرات وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وكانوا لنا عابدين ولوطا آتيناه حكما وعلما ونجيناه من القرية ونجيناه من القرية التي كانت تعمل الخبائث إنهم كانوا قوم سوء فاسقين وأدخلناه في رحمتنا إنه من الصالحين. صالحين because the righteous are always saved and he was saved from the crime of Sodom and Gomorrah. This saved from a filth and a pollution which is reviving itself and proving to be that great danger that we always knew what it was and now affecting us in our communities around the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purified the blessed land. And this blessed land, you need to understand that when a blessed land is given this status by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like the other blessed land, Mecca, this area cannot take evil for long. It cannot take filth for long. It will be tried and it will be tested. It will be tried and it will be tested. The people will suffer. But the area itself will be purified completely from one end to the other. وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ وَبَيْنَ الْقُرَى الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا قُرًا ظَاهِرَةً وَقَدَّرْنَا فِيهَا السَّيْرِ سِيرُوا فِيهَا لَيَالِيَ وَأَيَّامًا آمِنِينَ towns which we had blessed and this is where they took residence the people of Bani Israel and they remained there with Sayyidina Yusuf salam, as far and as long as possible until they left for Egypt and there they became settled because Sham was always the prize for every person who tried to take the kingdom always those who wanted the dominion they had to take Sham they had because of its strategic, because of its quality, its importance across every sphere. So when they went to Egypt, they stayed there in stability for a long time, but too long. And you know when th things become comfortable, when you become relaxed, that's when you start to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this mighty nation, and it had earned its stripes. They were mighty because they had suffered, they had sacrificed. And so they had earned that respect, but now in Egypt, after time passes and they leave the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they became a lost people. And they became under the thumb of the ruling Pharaoh. And they became persecuted and oppressed. But then who did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send to be their champion? Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. This guy was an incredible prophet. His story is mind-blowing. And you may think, why does he not stay and sacrifice with his people all the way? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a plan for this blessed man. 
And so he evacuated him out of Egypt and then sent him towards Midian, sent him into Sham for a life experience and then a work experience. Yes, he got hooked up by a man who they call Shu'i, although this itself is in question. But he was a blessed man, a man of Tawheed and a man of goodness who married his daughter to Sayyidina Musa and established the lineage and established a principle in Sayyidina Musa that what I want will deserve, will need sacrifice, I will need to work for it. Ten years he remains and he does this sacrifice with his family. Then the time comes that he knows that he needs to leave. He needs to go back and save his people because he knows his responsibility. And so one night, a dark night and a cold night, he leaves on the journey to Masr, to Egypt. And as he is going, they become lost, him with his wife. They become lost and they do not know where they are or where they are going. And then suddenly he sees in the foreground a fire and it's burning brightly. And so he looks at this fire and he thinks, yes. And so he turns to his wife and he says, wait here. Perhaps I can go there and I can bring you something back which will keep us warm. Or I can find the person who started it. Maybe they can give us some guidance along the way. وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَىٰ إِذْ رَآ نَارًا فَقَالَ لِأَهْلِهِمْ كُثُوا إِنِّي آنَسْتُ نَارًا لَعَلِّي آتِيكُمْ مِنْهَا بِقَبَسٍ أَوْ أَجِدُ عَلَى النَّارِ هُدَىٰ فَلَمَّا أَتَاهَا نُودِيَ يَا مُوسَىٰ إِنِّي أَنَا رَبُّكَ فَاخْلَعْنَ عَلَيْكَ Worship me and keep up the prayer so that you remember me, the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what about his people? What about his responsibility to the people? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him, go to Fir'aun and speak to him. Go to Fir'aun and warn him and advise him. But Musa alayhi salam needed help. And so who did he choose? But he chose his brother, his brother Harun alayhi salam for that support. Because not to make his task easier for himself, but to make this job more successful so that Allah is worshipped better. اذهب إلى فرعون إنه طوى قال رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي هارون أخي أشدد به أزري وأشركه في أمري your request is granted. Your request is granted. Now go, go to Fir'aun, but speak to him gently. Perhaps he might be reminded, he may take heed. He might even show you some respect even. But you make it very clear to him. You are God's messengers. And that he has to free the children of Israel. He has to free these people. He has to stop persecuting them. He has to stop punishing them and let them go to the blessed land of Asham. فأرسل معنا بني إسرائيل ولا تعذبهم قد جئناك بآية من ربك والسلام على من اتبع الهدى إنا قد أوحي إلينا أن العذاب على من 
We expect that from them. We expect these people to ignore the signs and the advice of Allah and His messengers. But Sayyidina Musa was still told, speak gently, be easy with them. This is the way that we give da'wah. Call them and here are some signs, miracles, nice miracles. Stunning miracles that will make the mind reflect and make you believe, but they didn't want to believe. And so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to take it up a level. And He sent down trial upon trial upon trial and horror to shock the people because that is how we are. We don't like it when we're told in a nice way and we have to be then beaten by the stick. And that's the shame of the people. And even at that moment, they were not true. They screamed out to Sayyidina Musa to save them. Ask for it to stop. We will believe in you. But what is the nature of the people of shirk? What is the nature of the people of treachery except treachery? And so they broke that promise. So even though they said we will stop, but they didn't. And so then when they allowed Bani Israel to leave, when they allowed them to leave, they then came after them and tried to kill them. Can you believe that? They tried to kill them after they had tricked them and said go. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already responded to the dua of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. In one move destroyed all of them. A scene which is described in the Quran. Antiquity is preserved for us to see with our own eyes in Egypt. A story which all of the religions look up to and are shocked by and amazed. In one movement, this was the response of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the response to a dua, and you listen carefully. A dua which Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he made when he realized that the situation was not able to be saved. He asked Allah, I need now the real help. Allah sent that help 40 years later. Now your da'wah has been responded to 40 years. You know why? Because Bani Israel needed to be purified. If you are going to be given victory, you have to deserve that victory. And so they were purified further by the trial and the tribulation under the hand of Pharaoh. But because of that, they were given victory. They became the chosen people like they said we are. They became the blessed people and they entered Asham. وَقَالُوا مَهْمَا تَأْتِنَا بِهِ مِنْ آيَةٍ لِتَسْحَرَنَا بِهَا لِتَسْحَرَنَا بِهَا فَمَا نَحْنُ لَكَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ فَأَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمُ الطُّوفَانَ وَالْجَرَادَ وَالْقُمَّلَ وَالضَّفَادِعَ وَالدَّمَ آيَاتٍ مُفَصَّلَاتٍ وَالدَّمَ آيَاتٍ مُفَصَّلَاتٍ فَاسْتَكْبَرُوا وَكَانُوا قَوْمًا مُجْرِمِينَ وَلَمَّا وَقَعَ عَلَيْهِمُ الرِّجْزُ قَالُوا يَا مُوسَى ادْعُ لَنَا رَبَّكَ بِمَا عَهِدَ عِنْدَكَ لَئِنْ كَشَفْتَ عَنَّا لَئِنْ كَشَفْتَ عَنَّا الرِّجْزَ لَنُؤْمِنَنَّ لَكَ وَلَنُرْسِلَنَّ مَعَكَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ فَلَمَّا كَشَفْنَا عَنْهُمُ الرِّجْزَ إِلَى أَجَلٍ هُمْ بَالِغُوهُ إِذَا هُمْ يَنْكُثُونَ فَانْتَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ فَأَغْرَقْنَاهُمْ فِي الْيَمِّ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا وَكَانُوا عَنْهَا غَافِلِينَ وَأَوْرَثْنَا الْقَوْمَ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا يُسْتَضْعَفُونَ مَشَارِقَ الْأَرْضِ وَمَغَارِبَهَا الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ الْحُسْنَى عَلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ بِمَا صَبَرُوا وَدَمَّرْنَا مَا كَانَ يَصْنَعُ فِرْعَوْنُ وَقَوْمُهُ وَمَا كَانُوا يَعْرِشُونَ بِمَا صَبَرُوا Because of their patience, because of their sacrifices, they were given the blessed land. And they were given such a beautiful place in the blessed land. Holy and positive and provisions. A place that gave them sidq, a place that gave them so much khair. But again, when you become too comfortable, you start to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the companions of the Prophet used to be so concerned when things were good. Because when things are good, 
you don't feel that extra motivation but when you are being tested you cry out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's in the trials and the tests that you are really purified and that you really turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sadly Bani Israel for those of you who are thinking why is it that this, this huge nation has been superseded by the Muslim nation why why is it that they weren't given the run all the way to the end because of these continual crimes because now of this ingratitude, this argumentation that they fell into, and their disputation and denying the favor of Allah. وَلَقَدْ بَوَّأْنَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ مُبَوَّأَ صِدِقٍ وَرَزَقَنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَرَزَقَنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ فَمَا اخْتَلَفُوا حَتَّى جَاءَهُمُ الْعِلْمِ they become arrogant, they become lazy. Musa is still having patience with them. Musa السلام, then is told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he needs to move now more into a sham. Sham is a huge area dominated by Syria, yes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted the center of sham. There were no Jordan and Lebanon in those days, the center was Baytul Maqdis, the blessed land, the holy land, the central point where we will now later see Al-Aqsa. Musa salam told Bani Israel, come and join me. We need to take this. We now have been given the ability by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take this, but they said, no, we will not go with you. Why do we need to go and do that? Why don't you and your Lord go and deal with it yourself? وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ اذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ جَعَلَ فِيكُمْ أَنْبِيَاءَ إِذْ جَعَلَ فِيكُمْ أَنْبِيَاءَ وَجَعَلَكُمْ مُلُوكًا وَآتَاكُمْ وَآتَاكُمْ مَا لَمْ يُؤْتِ أَحَدًا مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ يَا قَوْمِ دَخُلُوا الْأَرْضَ الْمُقَدَّسَةَ الَّتِي كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَلَا تَرْتَدُّوا عَلَى أَدْبَارِكُمْ فَتَنْقَلِبُوا خَاسِرِينَ قَالُوا يَا مُوسَى إِنَّ فِيهَا قَوْمًا جَبَّارِينَ وَإِنَّا لَنْ نَدْخُلَهَا وَإِنَّا لَنْ نَدْخُلَهَا حَتَّى يَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا فَإِنْ يَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا فَإِنَّا دَاخِلُونَ قَالَ رَجُلَانِ مِنَ الَّذِينَ يَخَافُونَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ ادْخُلُوا عَلَيْهِمُ الْبَابَ يَخَافُونَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ ادْخُلُوا عَلَيْهِمُ الْبَابَ فَإِذَا دَخَلْتُمُوهُ فَإِذَا دَخَلْتُمُوهُ فَإِنَّكُمْ غَالِبُونَ وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنتُم مُّؤْمِنِينَ قَالُوا يَا مُوسَى إِنَّا لَن نَّدْخُلَهَا أَبَدًا مَّا دَامُوا فِيهَا فَاذْهَبْ أَنتَ وَرَبُّكَ فَاذْهَبْ أَنتَ وَرَبُّكَ فَقَاتِلَا إِنَّا هَاهُنَا قَاعِدُونَ Can you imagine how angry that would have made Sayyidina Musa? What an act of treachery and ingratitude. And he became angry. And he became depressed. He did. And then he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what they have done. I tried my best. This is what they have done. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, okay. And as a punishment for them, they were kicked out of Asham for 40 years one wandering around يعني, just in a state of, of randomness and just here and there they don't know they are yani, rejected people and that's because people have to earn the right to live on revered soil you have to be special you have to deserve to live in the place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses Sham today Syria, Palestine. This is not for ordinary people. This is for the people who are willing to earn it via sacrifice. And their expulsion, their expulsion, the expulsion of Bani Israel will explain to you what is happening today. This land is being purified. We will not allow the filth to continue. And if it requires sacrifice, then so be it. 
قال رب إني لا أملك إلا نفسي وأخي فافرق بيننا وبين القوم الفاسقين قال فإنها محرمة عليهم أربعين سنة يتيهون في الأرض فلا تأس على القوم الفاسقين. You might not imagine this, but they were given this opportunity now to wander around, and you know what that does? That calls the mind. You start to realize now things aren't so great, and so they turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surprise, surprise. They turn back to Sayyidina Musa. Surprise, surprise. Help us now. Okay, we, 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 are, we, we repent to you. We seek forgiveness from you. Now give us some kind of system so we can go back and take this land. Go back now and get, get rid of the people and the kings that have taken our place. So find a king for us. Find a king that will be able to help us. And who do you think was this responsibility given to but Yusha? And who do you think, alayhi salam, did he, did he choose? He chose Talut. And who do you think was the champion who would fight those people but Dawood, alayhi salam? You see these names that are becoming involved with the freeing and the blessing of this land? And you know what Dawood did to Jalut or Goliath? And after that had happened, and after this actual battle had established and freed up the land, Dawood alayhi salam was then blessed with control. And then after that, his son Suleiman alayhi salam, great people for a great land. They were willing to fight, they were willing to obey, they were willing to sacrifice for the sake of Allah. Great people get the blessing every time. <laughs> وَكُلًّا آتَيْنَا حُكْمًا وَعِلْمًا وَسَخَّرْنَا مَعَ دَاوُودَ الْجِبَالَ يُسَبِّحْنَ وَالطَّيْرَ وَكُنَّا فَاعِلِينَ وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ صَنْعَةَ لَبُوسٍ لَكُمْ لِتُحْصِنَكُمْ مِنْ بَأْسِكُمْ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ شَاكِرُونَ وَلِسُلَيْمَانَ الرِّيحَ عَاصِفَةً تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِهِ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا إِلَى الْأَرْضِ الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا وَكُنَّا بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَالِمِينَ So you can see why this is a blessed land with people like this and the other blessed land the land which, which Ismail السلام, was residing in and his children, that was also doing well. Mecca. And you see these two blessed lands, these two chosen places, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes a link between them. The first link we are told in the Quran is a very simple one, just one of visitation between the Quraysh and the people of Sham. <laughs> إلافهم رحلة الشتاء والصيف. That صيف journey, that summer journey, was one which they respected. They respected these people and its land. This is one link, but the real link, of course, is Al Isra. That wonderful night, that event where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was taken from Mecca, from this center where Ibrahim عليه السلام had built that Kaaba. Had built that Kaaba, the first masjid, and then to that second center, that farthermost masjid, in a place 40 years later when Sayyidina Ibrahim made it. The two masajid that are revived by Sayyidina Ibrahim, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, establishes the real link. What a land! Blessing, blessing, surrounding blessing. This is what Al Isra is all about. سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير. I want you to imagine that night. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has arrived at a land, a land that's known as the Levant, a prophecy which is being fulfilled by the sending of so many prophets and they are gathered behind him, countless prophets, giants, all of them. They're being led by our leader, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
all in the greatest gathering and the greatest jama'ah that you can ever imagine. What an incredible honor. What an incredible man. What an incredible place to witness such a gathering. And this, by the way, was happening in a land, the Levant, the Sham, which was dominated by non-Muslims, controlled by non-Muslims, at a place called Masjid al-Aqsa, where there was no masjid. It was just a ruined area. And that's what we know. That it doesn't matter what happens to the people there, if they're good people or not. It doesn't matter if the masajid are there or not. Through the sacrifice of those who are willing to sacrifice, the land will be given its izzah. Do you think these people, these criminals will be allowed to remain? Did that happen to Thamud? The people came and they were destroyed. The people came of Shu'ib. They tried to transgress. They were destroyed. The people of Lord, they came. They tried to transgress. They were destroyed. What makes you think that this blessed land today will not be purified? The people who kill the innocent believers. What makes you think that they will be allowed to continue this and that they will not be destroyed. Destroyed completely as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. What makes you think that these heroes of this uprising are not worthy through sacrificing their life and their homes and their wealth and their izzah because they know of the legacy that came before them. They know and don't think that just because we went to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that we can just leave out Sayyidina Isa salam. You need to understand that Iman is established, faith is established in this country, in this land of Syria and its surrounding areas, blessed areas. This land is where the people came from, where the Prophets made their name, where they played their game of giving da'wah to the people and suffering as a result of it and raising in status of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the land where Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam who came and he called and he asked and he pleaded and he himself was also denied. He himself was also denied. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they tried to kill him, he rescued him and he will return. And where do you think he will return? but to this blessed land because it's the land of victory. And when he comes, the people who were his followers will be the first of the people to believe in him. He will come back and he will be a witness upon them. He will come back in the land of Sham, in the land of Syria, in the city of Damascus, the Mararatul Bayda at the white minaret to the east of the city. He will come, he will be the best of the people on the earth and he will kill the worst of the people on the earth. Al-Masih al-Dajjal, the Antichrist, it will all happen. It will all kick off in Syria, in Sham, that region, a region where the fitan come, where Juj and Ma'juj will come and they will trial and test the believers. They will be suffering. Because this is a land of suffering and sacrifice, a land of champions. Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow the people to gain that love and that respect that they crave for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it will come just free like that? Ya Tawba al Sham. Glad tidings to Sham. Glad tidings to Sham. Glad tidings to Sham. That land where the angels of Allah have spread their wings over it. The Prophet وسلم, said, you will, you will divide into armies and you will see armies that will be to the east and to the west. There will be armies in Yemen. There will be armies in Iraq. There will be armies in Sham. And they said to him, Ya Rasulullah, to where should we go? Which one should we choose? He said, Alaykum bi Sham. Join the fight. Join the fight and be with the army in Asham, said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And whoever refuses, then let him go to Yemen. But go to Sham. Have no doubt that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has guaranteed to look after Sham and its people. Because Allah Inna al-Iman. Because have no doubt that faith 
When? وَإِذَا وَقَعَتِ الْفِتَن When? The fitan come. When the trials come. The victory. The faith. The solution will be in Asham. The people of Sham. The people of the West. Allahirina ala al-haq. They are the ones who will manifest the truth. They will not be defeated in any manner. My brothers and sisters, I close with this. I want you to reflect upon what we've just said. We have just been creating a small narrative in your mind. We have just made summary in 40 minutes of an incredible prophecy. An incredible legacy of Levantine prophets. Those that were sent down specifically to the Levant to purify that land and call people to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, that you know we thought Sham was dead. Last 40 years, you look at Sham, subhanAllah, we thought it was dead. When you look at the leader now, Bashar, and you see his father, and what they have been doing to the people and the believers for these times, we, you know when you know you just, something is written off, we've grown up seeing the crimes of these leaders, we've seen the torture and the killing and the massacring, and then when we have seen what we have seen now in these last three years, an uprising with the people who had nothing, nothing, but their iman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because a red line was crossed and they realize now that this is the time to stand and to prove to the world that this is the blessed land of Sham and we deserve to be here. Nothing barefoot, without weapons, without money, going up against one of the worst tyrants that the history will ever witness, supported by the worst of atheist forces. All of this going up, but they had iman. And that, my brothers and sisters, is where we stand today. I want you, everyone in this room and listening to this right now, to think that when you see the word Syria, don't see the word Syria. When you see the word Syria, don't think of Levant or special words like that. Don't even think of Sham. Think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who blessed this land. Think of the people that we just told you about. Think of what they came and what they did. Think of how they suffered and think of the legacy that they have created for us to reflect over and to emulate. This is the people of Sham. These are our heroes. If you leave this room today without making dua for those people, you have not understood the legacy of the prophets who have brought this deen for you. You have not understood the legacy of the Prophet ﷺ. You have not understood the ahadith where the Prophet ﷺ has told us that our faith is in Sham. It came down in Sham. This deen came down in Sham. It was made in Sham and it will be taken from Sham. Because Sham is also the land that we will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sham is also the place where we will be gathered. It will be the land of gathering. It begins in Sham. It ends in Sham. My brothers and sisters, this is a reminder to myself and to you all. We've heard much about Syria. We hear about it all the time. We hear people say donate. We hear people say make dua. And your heart might become tired. Your ears might become tired. And you may even take it further. You may be even crying. Maybe there is no tears left in your eyes over what you're seeing and over the crimes. I want you to know that Sham has to be so much part of your heart physically that it becomes an actual part of the muscle itself. You know the hadith that when part of our ummah is hurting, then the rest, when the, when, when, uh, aspect of our ummah is suffering, then it's like a limb in the body. It pains and we feel that pain. We have to feel that pain by feeling the strength of that legacy. And the Levantine prophecy will see itself out. This land will be purified. The question is, will we take part of that ajar? Will we be part of those incredible people who in some way contributed, whether financially, whether intellectually, whether via dua? Are you able to step up yourself and make this your number one concern, more important than you, than you and your family and everything else? That's the question, my brothers and sisters, that I leave you with. And in closing, I want to dedicate this presentation to, um, to three. Number one, I want to dedicate this to the people of Quran because it is the people of Quran who bring to life through their recitation, through their leadership, through their explanation, 
this wonderful message, these wonderful secrets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in the Arabic language. And with that, I thank Sheikh Abdul Ghaffar Asmali Hafizahullah ta'ala who recited to you these verses in the Qara'a of Hafs. I also, number two, want to thank Ahlul Ilm, the people of knowledge, who bring forth these, these verses and make them relevant to us, explain and understand. And the one who helped me in this narrative, my own Sheikh, Sheikh Kihlan Abu Abdullah Al-Jabouri, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, and to all of the scholars, we have a debt of gratitude to them as well, because they are the ones who unlock this knowledge and make it so that we understand that we become closer to them. And finally, I wish to dedicate this presentation about the Levant, about Sham, to a people who are at this moment truly reviving the legacy of the messengers, the legacy of the land of Sham. I want to dedicate this to the true heroes of the uprising. They are paying the ultimate price against the forces of Kufar. They are paying the ultimate price against the forces of Kufr that has taken their wealth, their families, their children, and in many, many cases, over two or three hundred thousand lives as well. Death and evacuation and refugees and misery and sacrifice that we could never imagine. But they believe in their cause. They believe in their cause. And we have to believe in their cause as well. That's an obligation upon us. It's part of your own Iman. And so this is dedicated to them. So after this now, as we leave, you just reflect upon that for one moment and you make dua for these people who are fighting for you. They're fighting for you. They're fighting for your deen and for your Iman. Thank <laughs> you.